Hello, my juicy co-creators. Lilu here. I'm in Glastonbury at the Gothic Image uh, with Graham. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? Very good, thank you. Just got here from London. Yeah, you're uh, you're British. Well, you're no, you're Estonian, but you live in London. No, I'm from London, but I live in Estonia, other way around. The other way around. Well, it's exciting because you know there's a lot of Eastern Europeans that are watching the videos, and you're an author. You wrote Navigating the Out of Body Experience, and you had yourself many, many out of body experiences. So that's why we're here. I want to discover how do you describe the? Is it OBE? Yeah, OBE. <laughs> What is, what is an out-of-body experience? How do you describe it? For me, it's an experience where you feel that your consciousness or some kind of second self is separated from the body and is at another location above yourself, sometimes looking down, or maybe at a completely different location in another place altogether, sometimes even out of the planet. I've been in experiences where I've been looking down at the earth from above, or maybe in a a different level of reality altogether so oh. and we're talking here a very conscious experience where you recall everything it's not the imagination or is it part of the imagination is at work for me i think it's a very real experience a very um i think there's a very objective side to it that you can perceive things as they really are um it's very separate to anything like dreams for me because i i always have the experience from a waking state like um, a relaxed but waking state and it often is yeah very objective and I can sometimes see things as they are sometimes interact on other levels perceive things so yeah it's um, it's it's not imagination I'm, I don't so some p some people uh, have it just it, it just happens to them and they're really surprised and I guess you get into the Dalton and all of a sudden you get back in your body right this this can happen yeah so some I mean my very first experiences when I was around 12 years old I I had these spontaneous ones just a, just a few and that really opened me up to the whole thing that this can happen and then after that I learned to induce them intentionally so some people induce them intentionally some spontaneous and then of course the near death experiences where people have them close to you know close to death but, but then they come back so do you do you when you induce them do you direct them are you the co-creator of it how does this flow the scenario I mean <laughs> Some people are more like try to control it a lot more, but actually I like to go with the flow. I like to see where the experience takes me and I find the really spiritually uplifting experiences, the ones that really open me up and really take me to another level, those are the ones when I, when I go with it. Like a lot of things, the more you try to control or force it, yeah. it can cancel the experience out. Yeah. So somehow I think it's better to just go with what's taking place and see where it takes you and usually that can be you know really teach me a lot and take me to new levels in a way yeah so how, how do you get into how how do you do it can you describe the, the the process before we get into the experience itself um well for me the, the process now is very natural i can kind of sense when it's going to happen because i get this kind of energy wave moving through my body it's not some people describe a sharp vibration like a high pitched almost um, quite aggressive almost vibration but for me it's more of a steady wave feeling and then when I get that I know that it's the right condition and I can then focus my attention my consciousness on a particular place or point on the ceiling or something like that and then I'll find myself separate from my body or at a completely different location or something like that. Um, but within my teaching and within the book, I, I tend to look at the individual, look at the person and what their skills are, what's, you know, what's good with them as, a, as an individual, how, what their emotional makeup is, whether they're a visual person or more of a into music and sound and things like that. And then I focus the techniques that I'm going to teach them based around them as an individual. So it's more everyone's different. So I try to work in that way. I guess you can do this as a group too and have a similar experience or everybody will have... How does that, that work as a group? It's harder to work as a group, but um, 
couples um, one or two people can often work together there's um especially when there's a new relationship and people are very excited and you know energized that that new energy that people get I think in that kind of situation it can be very easy to have OBEs to each other or connect with each other in that way it's almost like it there's a higher telepathic link or something it's like a it's like an emotional thing so I think a lot of psychical abilities and these kinds of things are to do with the amount of emotion involved and the, the energy that the emotion brings with it. So. What are some of the most important things to, to keep in mind or in heart when doing this? Is there, is there some particular uh, peace of mind or state or focus that, that should be put into place so that it works? Um, I think probably having a really open mind and not having preconceptions and limits and trying to let go of fears and things like that. I think a lot of the time people get held back by fears, limitations and um, even belief systems. They're too, oh, you know, this is how it's going to happen. This yeah. is what I read in this book or, you know, and things like that. So then if it doesn't happen in that way along that formula, then then they feel oh, this isn't right, this isn't the proper experience. Yeah. But everyone's experience is unique, so I tend to think, you know, that it's not like that. You know, you don't have to look at someone else's experience and say, yeah. that's how it should be, because it's yeah. different for everyone. So how do you let it unfold? How Once you're in there, you start feeling you're, 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 you're coming out, your soul, is that, can we say soul, spirit, is okay. out of the body? I tend to see it almost like consciousness extended out or maybe um, maybe it's a soul, maybe it's a spirit, maybe it's that our consciousness is just expanded out throughout the whole universe. I quite like that idea. It's almost like that our consciousness is out there all the time in a way and that we, we just uh, bring it down in a way to, to work with this level. I mean, there's, there's lots of possibilities for what could be going on and I find that quite exciting. I don't like to say like, it's this or it's that because we've got so many possibilities we can explore mm -hmm. with it and what what might be going on so mm -hmm. yeah so then you're feeling this consciousness move and you're going with it describe that part of the experience where you allow it to unfold because it's quite something um well for me it can be it can be a really transformative um interconnected experience it's like when I feel my consciousness come out of my body it's like all of the consciousness or um, awareness in the universe in a way it's like you're linking with that in some way I suppose like cosmic consciousness things like that that people describe it's almost like you've gone from a singular awareness to this you know expansive awareness I think what people describe in near-death experiences when they come into contact with this compassionate light and things like that I think that's very in line with the kind of thing I have when I have an out-of-body experience I have this sense of interconnection I have this sense of compassion growing out of that interconnection so it's a it's an unfolding that from the whole experience really so, so does that unfold yeah or is there chapters I mean does that just everything flows in from one scene to the next or is there like different times and space that pops I think there's different levels maybe there's um like with a lot of spiritual experiences you have more say mundane ones like if you're meditating you might have a more everyday meditation but then you have those moments when you really you get to another level you get to another place in a way within that experience and with the out of body experience I think it's the same you have those peak moments where you really go go much deeper and for example I've had experiences where I've seen something before it happens like a precognitive experience mm -hmm. so it's like I've been in another location but also in another time mm -hmm. so I felt that sense of something before it happens mm -hmm. so you feel like that's on a completely different energetic level you know it's like yeah. when I when I had the most powerful of those experiences I was you know it was the deepest in a way out-of-body experience I've ever had so So it's a, are we talking of biolocation? Can you demultiply yourself too through those experiences? Can you rematerialize your I body? I mean, no, I don't. I don't. No, not personally. That's yeah. not something I've experienced. But um, <laughs> well, I'm wondering how far this can go into rematerializing, possibly, or, or um, there's some people that have reported that. Sure. I, I think for me, it's more that um, your consciousness is 
relocating to another place and um, maybe into afterlife levels or different spaces, things like that. So what is the uh, uh, implication in life? I mean, how? what do you then bring from those experiences in your reality? How did that change your reality of living on Earth through those out-of-body experiences? I, I think it changed me completely because if, if I look at me when I was... Um, a young teenager, I was growing up in quite a difficult environment, surrounded by a lot of crime and very poor part of London. Um, and as I was growing up, I, I started to explore these kinds of levels and it just drew me away from that and just opened me up to looking into completely different areas, reading literature, learning about music, finding out about different spiritual practices and and over time as well through the direct out of body experience that sense of interconnection which led me to that sense of compassion which led me to become vegan and change my lifestyle and just completely change who I am really and um, ultimately even be in other countries and explore the world in a way so it's completely opened my horizons and so you travel for cheap really I mean you just go around <laughs> whenever you want <laughs> Well, yeah, it's um, it's a bonus for sure. You can, in theory, go anywhere. Yeah, some people related to uh, hallucinogens, you know, psychedelics. Is that something that uh, you encourage or that you have experienced? It's not something I've personally ever done or or practiced. I think I felt with uh, drugs and alcohol um, and things. I I didn't want to mix that kind of stuff with the experiences I was having. Why? Because I felt that um, those two things together might be a, a bit too much, yeah. essentially. It could, could push me too far or something like that. So I just, and within my own practice, I, I found I didn't feel that was the avenue I needed. Yeah. So it's just... Um, I'm totally aligned with that. And I could feel the, the purity of the experience rather than being it uh, uh, slightly changed through another... Sure. So tell us, is there is there something else like uh, I don't have really a particular question right now that comes to mind? Is there? Um, could you? D yeah, I would love to ask you. Could, could you describe the, the that feeling of unconditional love that you have probably experienced? That light you you have bed in it. Oh. You often resourced source there. Um, I think it, I think it's actually come more and more into me as like in my everyday life. Yeah. So I think for a long time it was this sense of traveling to that in a sense or being in that state of awareness or in that interconnectedness or being out of my body and viewing people from above I mean probably one that illustrates it quite well was an out-of-body experience where I was over the new forest in England and I went down through the trees and went close to a just a simple flower growing in the in the middle of the woods and I just looked at it and it was like my whole being went into that flower and I could see the sense of the life force going through it um, you know the, the nutrients coming up from the soil and the whole process of that plant's life and that that in a, in a way just linked me with this whole sense of like nature and the universe and yeah. this interconnection so I've also had that with a, with a with an animal as well where I almost like felt that I lived the whole life cycle of the animal through the experience So it was like being aware of predators and danger and things like that. And then towards the end of the experience, it was like I was, uh, my life ended in that, in that ant creature's life. And then, and then I came back to myself. So it's like, has linked me to lots and lots of different things through that. So, so time space is not the same here, I guess, if it, because you were, you were, might have gone for 20 minutes and you had lived the whole life of an animal. Yeah, I, um, time definitely seems to be very blurred. I struggled with that a lot at first because I had this, I had this sense that time was very linear and worked in that way. But then I had these precognitive experiences. Um, one of a of the terrorist attacks in London, for example, I had I had a, uh, an out of body experience where I I saw it before it happened, and also another one in London as well, a bombing that took place in Soho. So I had these quite 
quite negative in a way because of what was happening. But again, they increased this sense of compassion because I had this overwhelming sense of compassion for what had happened to the people. So it linked me more with why someone would act in that way and um, why I wouldn't want to act in that way, if you like. So it was this uh, opening up of me to, to see that. You know, I think I needed to see both sides in a way. So that was part of the process as well. Can you bump into other souls doing the same and the, like being in the same area and you sense other uh, spirit or consciousness there? I have I have seen other people having out of body experiences and I've also seen people who appeared to have just recently passed over. So one one significant experience like that was I saw um a group of people at a distance and they seemed confused and unsure what was going on and they were maybe it felt like about 200 meters away or 150 meters away um and there was a kind of mist between them and I I felt like I wanted to reach out to them, but I couldn't reach them. They were at, they were at a distance. Um, and then after the experience, when I came back to my body, I um, just saw on the news that there'd been a plane crash. And so somehow, I, I don't know for sure, obviously, but there seemed to be a link, like what I'd seen were the people from that, from that accident kind of thing. So it was like them going through that transition you make changes in those moments when you have uh, a preview of what's coming up? Do you sense that you have a, a say in the matter of things or not? It's it's hard to say. I, I think I, I did feel like maybe, yeah, I could make a choice not to go to that location or something like that. Um, I thought a lot about it that maybe it was some kind of potential future. Maybe we see in that way rather than a literal, this is how it's going to be. Um, I I had conversations with Rupert Sheldrake, who I've worked with, um, and I had conversations with Dean Radin and different scientists to, you know, really try and think about what might have been going on and in terms of the um, whether it could be possible in terms of a scientific mm -hmm. way of looking at things. So, yeah, I really I struggled with it for a long time, but somehow those ideas made me think, well, maybe it is more possible mm -hmm. than. Than maybe I would have originally imagined. Mm. So, is, is science uh, proving all this now? Is it, or starting to prove it? I think so. Yeah, I think we're going a lot more along those lines. I think, I mean, one thing with the book as well is that I've I've tried to base a lot of the ideas and a lot of the approaches on on science and on parapsychology and on these ideas and really tried to say, well, what actually happens in these experiences? What do people on the most you know grassroots level what do they actually experience on a spiritual level on a noetic level in these types of events and and where can that what can we learn from that science you know can that help us reach those states better or more efficiently or you know so i've i've really explored that as well that's something that i think uh, there's a lot of potential there in the future and even using technology and um, different structures and things to actually create the most conducive environment, really immerse the person in a different in a different headspace or heart space or heart space. <laughs> Thank you so much for this uh, for this for this information and for sharing your experience so clearly. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Much love, my beautiful co-creators from Glastonbury. We're at Gothic Image, and tomorrow it's your book signing. I guess this video will be in a few days only online, but um, navigating the out-of-body experience. Graham, thank you. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.